We've got a non-running Tyco engine. To open everything up, pry at the bottom, and just lift everything out. This is the counterweight in the middle. We'll pull out the rear trucks the same way, just kind of pull and lift it out. On the front truck, there's two screws deep in here. With a long flathead screwdriver, put it into this hole and get the head of the screw and unscrew it. Do the same thing to the other side. I'll pull it out so you can see where the screws were coming from. These two bosses right here are where the screws were set. We'll clean off all the debris. There's some nails, there's some staples. There's a big finishing nail right here. We'll remove the light bulb in the front with a small screwdriver. Now we're completely free. If I put power directly on the wires, you can see that the light works. We'll spray everything down with rubbing alcohol. We'll start pulling out all the debris. You can see just all kinds of stuff in there. This one is packed with steel wool. Just made a mess of it. That's why I like to use this nylon instead of the steel wool. We'll remove some of the screws so we can get the contacts clean. We'll start cleaning off all the corrosion. Clean up all the brass connectors. These trucks are riveted together, but you can see the motor through this little hole so you can take a screwdriver and just spin it to see if it does move. We'll remove the screw at the top of the motor. This will release this center wire. Pry up the fiberglass board. This will release the brushes. Scrub everything down with a toothbrush. These are not serviceable unless you drill these rivets out. The rivets are very soft and made out of brass. With the rivets drilled, we can pull the bottom of the truck off. Everything's filthy in there. Lots of steel wool, everything dirty. Now it's just kind of scrubbing everything out. The wheels we can pull off, you can see everything's really dirty in there. When you pull this second wheel out, you can just see how much dirt's in there. Remove the brass so we can see the worm gear in there. Clean up all these brass pieces. When you spin it, you can see that it just freezes and locks sometimes. It's all that steel wool, it's just jammed in there. Look at that, it's not even moving. We'll just keep picking that steel wool out of there. So next time you think you want to use steel wool, you might want to think again or just be careful that it doesn't get near the motors. Just look at that piece we just pulled up. I mean, that's enormous. These are permanent magnets in here, so it's really hard to get this steel wool out. I found a technique that's working pretty good. If you take a toothbrush and you just kind of scoot it in like a 15 degree angle, it'll move everything and you can just kind of wipe that stuff out of there. You can see it's starting to move a little easier. You can see that we're making progress. Look how easy it moves. We'll keep spraying it down with rubbing alcohol. With everything clean, we can go ahead and start putting the brushes back in. Line up the circuit board with these two holes until it locks Set in. Set the screw in and just give it a twist. Place the wire right around that screw. Then just tighten it up and then you'll have these two pieces of brass that are gonna connect to the brushes. Push these brushes up through the slot in the fiber board. Hold the brush in place and take this brass piece, bring it up around, it's gonna be under spring tension and release it like this. Now the brush is held tightly against the commentator. Do the same thing to the other side with the other brush. If you take a look at this brass wire, it's got a little bit of hook that connects to the fiber board and that allows you to fight against the fiber board to go in and make a strong contact with the brush. Before you hook it up to the battery, we need to make sure that the commentator is very clean. These little grooves, if anything is in here, it's gonna give us problems because it'll connect the power where it's not supposed to be. So just take like a needle and clean those out. Feel for any debris help remove any of the corrosion, I put some sandpaper through here and I'm just kind of scrubbing it out. You can see that I can pull the paper all the way through. Now the moment of truth. With everything all cleaned up, we'll apply power and it works. We'll touch the light and see if it works and it does. Because we have plastic gears, we'll use silicone grease. We'll apply grease to all of the gears. We'll apply the brass axle bearings. We'll apply some grease to the bearings themselves. Because I drilled out the rivets, I'm gonna take a drill. 
I'm going to drill a hole into the rivet. Then I'll place a self-tapping screw into the rivet. Place the wheels back in. With everything clean and greased, we'll put the truck bottom on. Instead of the rivet, we'll set this screw in nice and tight. Now with these screws, instead of rivets, we'll be able to pull this apart anytime we want to service it. Place everything back into the plastic box. Now when we apply voltage to the brass wheels, the wheels turn and the light turns on. We'll hook in the light. In this particular engine, brass wheels need to be on this side and this side so they can get ducked on either side of the track. To get the front trucks in, you want to make sure that you put the screws in first, then place it in. Now that we've got the screws tightened up, we've got both trucks on. Now when we apply voltage to the metal trucks, everything runs and it's fixed. Now we can pull off this sticker.